Welcome to the Gould's Water Technology video training series. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about how to check if your pressure transducer is working properly. A pressure transducer is also known as a pressure transmitter or pressure sensor. There are two types of transducers, voltage and amperage. First, we'll begin with the voltage transducer used on residential VFDs, such as the Solo 2. Much of this information is in the installation manual IM260. We will check the following possible issues. Loose connection inside the controller. Miswired transducer cable. Failed transducer. Vacuum on the transducer or a bad user interface board. To check for a disconnected or a loose connection, disconnect the transducer from the transducer connector and reconnect to ensure a good connection. Next, check the transducer cable leads inside the controller. Check for loose wires where the transducer cable connects to the user interface board by tugging on each wire. Also, Check if there is a break in the cable or broken wire in the transducer cable. It's recommended not to coil the transducer cable or have it next to or in the same conduit as the power or motor leads. A minimum of 12 inches between power wires is recommended. Next, you should check for a miswired transducer cable. On your user interface board, you will see the correct locations of the wires here. B is for your black wire, R for the red one, W for the white wire, and G for green. If they are misplaced, simply remove them and reattach the wires into the correct locations. If the VFD is indicating a failed transducer, you'll need to proceed with the following steps. With the transducer cable connected to the user interface board, use your multimeter. Measure the DC voltage between the black and white wires of the transducer cable. The voltage measured should be between 0.5 volts DC and 4.5 volts DC, depending on the system pressure. Be sure to check the installation manual specific to your controller to determine the appropriate value. For example, with a system pressure of 50 PSI and a 100 PSI transducer, the reading should be 2.5 volts DC. If there is a vacuum on the transducer of 17 inches mercury or more, this will cause a transducer fault. Eliminate the vacuum prior to replacing the old transducer. Finally, with your multimeter, check the power from the user interface board. The power between the black and red terminals should be between 4.5 to 5 volts DC. If the reading is outside of this range, the user interface board may need replacing. Next, let's look at current transducers typically used on commercial VFDs. In this case, we're going to use a 4 to 20 milliamp transducer used on the IPC. Check for a disconnected or loose connections. Disconnect the transducer from the transducer cable connector and reconnect to ensure a good connection. Next, check the transducer cable leads inside the controller. Check for loose wires where the transducer cable connects to the terminal by tugging on each wire. Also, check if there is a break in the cable or broken wire in the transducer cable. It's also recommended not to coil the transducer cable or have it next to or in the same conduit as the power or motor leads. A minimum of 12 inches between power wires is recommended. Check for a miswired transducer cable. Check that the wires are connected to the correct terminals. The brown wire should be on either terminal 12 or terminal 13, and the white wire should be on 53 or 54. To diagnose a failed transducer, a meter capable of reading milliamp and DC voltage is required. First, set the meter to read DC voltage. Place the black lead on terminal 20 common 
and the red lead on terminal 12 or 13, which supply your 24 volts DC. If functioning properly, the DC voltage will be 24 volts DC plus or minus 15%. If this voltage is not present, disconnect all control terminals and repeat the measurement. If voltage does not recover, depending on your specific unit, replace either the board or the entire VFD. Next, set the meter to read DC current milliamps. Disconnect the white wire in the transducer cable from terminal 53 or 54. Connect the black lead from the meter to terminal 53 or 54, which is the transducer input. Then, connect the red lead from the meter to the white wire of the transducer cable. The meter will display the output of the transducer. If functioning properly, the output of the transducer will be between 4 milliamps and 20 milliamps, depending on the pressure in the system. Let's look at a chart to determine the transducer feedback at various pressures. For example, with a system pressure of 50 psi, the meter should read approximately 7 milliamps.